clear shot. Don't give them clear shot. Don't give them clear shot. Don't give them clear shot. The Yankees should have never fucking fired Girardi. I don't understand. I'll never understand that move, dude. Nope. Classic Yankees. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's fire the GM that just took this team of fucking rookies and scrubs to the ALCS one inning away from a World Series. Yeah, let's fire him and hire a guy that has never managed in his entire life. Isn't Stanton in, like, a contract spot, too? Like, they got to get him re-signed. No, he's got, like, a five-year deal or some shit. He's got something they were just talking about. But I feel like the Yankees have, like, a weird uh, dynamic right now. Like, they're not really, like, cohesive. No, they're not, because they they went money ball, for sure. And now, apparently, they're trying to trade away a bunch of prospects to potentially get Mike Trout, is what I saw today. I I pay a lot for that. Yeah. They're either trying to get Trout or Harper before next year, which is retarded. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. No, they're nev- they're definitely not getting Trout. I don't think they're getting either of them. Harper wants to play for the Yankees, but he also has three more years left on this deal, and it's going to take a lot to get Washington to part away with him. Yeah. Because he's literally the best player they've ever had. I don't think that the <clears throat> Angels would drop Trout. There's no way. He's like their team right now. He's the best player in the <clears throat> league. He's probably going to end up being one of the best ever. Yeah, they don't care how much they pay him. Yeah. So NFL. Clear Shot's uh, MLB show. Yeah, fucking Christ. Fuck the Red Sox. <clears throat> uh, yeah, if yeah. you're listening right now, it's... <clears throat> well, yeah, if you're listening, it's going to be game two. Yeah. The World Series. Yeah, so this is four o'clock right before game one. On the 23rd. <clears throat> <clears throat> Guess let's just keep clearing our throats. Yeah. For a couple minutes. I don't know. This week of games was so disappointing, in my opinion. I was so excited for all these games, and it was just... Not good. Not good at all. I didn't get to watch, like, anything. Uh, the Actually, the best game of the year, in my opinion, and is, I'm totally biased, was this week, and it was Carolina versus Philadelphia. Philadelphia was up 17 nothing going into the fourth quarter. Carolina came back and won 21-17. So mm-hmm. that was a pretty good game. Cam Newton's Cam Newton, man. He's one of my favorite players in the league. He's got to be. I watched, like, uh, the Broncos was this Thursday game, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was just an absolute runaway. Yep. They kept throwing interceptions, too. They're dude, like, they, I, it wasn't, like, enough that they were already losing by, like, fucking 30. Yeah. They were like, yeah, let's turn it over again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Broncos scored, like, 25 or 21 points just, just off turnovers. I think yeah. they had two pick sixes and a fumble. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It just kept happening. And they, dude, the Cardinals looked horrible. Yeah. Uh, the Patriots game was pretty good, too, against the Bears. That was a good game. <clears throat> um, 38-31. Yeah. Uh, who else played? Chargers-Titans was 20-19. to That was a good one, actually. Yeah, so I spoke too soon on that. They That one, the Titans went for two instead of going for the tie, and they missed it. Yeah, you're not supposed to do that. No, it was pretty ballsy, though. Pretty cool. Colts blew the Bills out. Yep. Uh, so that's going to be cool. I don't want to see that. Did, did Detroit beat Seattle? No, that's next week. No, they beat the Dolphins because their logo is bad. Oh, yeah. Um, the Texans <laughs> crushed the Jaguars. Yep, 21-7. 20-7. 20-7. to 7. 20 to 7. 20 to 7. Uh, Vikings beat the Jets uh, by 20 points. Yep. Buccaneers beat the Browns by a field goal. That was a good game. <clears throat> Saints Ravens twenty four to twenty three. That was a good one too. We watched the end. Of, Vinny and I watched the end of that one at the bar. Oh yeah, I think I was. That watching was the, that. the they, Justin Tucker missed the extra point with like ten seconds left in the game. They fucking come all the way back and score a touchdown, and he misses an extra. Yeah, that's point. right. He missed his first one in his entire life. Yeah, it was off the crossbar or not the the left post there. I think. Yeah, he. Uh, he was yeah. perfect all of high school and all of college and up until two days ago. <laughs> he was like 222 for 222 with extra points. Yeah, but that's better than being Mason Crosby and then missing three. All of them, yeah. <clears throat> uh, Redskins, Cowboys. That was, uh, I watched that too. 
Yeah, we watched that one at the bar. That one was just as soon as that was uh, a missed this, field the, goal, though. The, yeah, this is the thing too. But that was because they fucking decided to call that penalty. Yeah, and not only was uh this not only was the long sniper for the Cowboys. And I mean, he the barely moved center. the ball, really, though. It's well, like, the thing is, so is weird, the man. Redskins center was doing this. They do the same thing. Every Almost every center does that. Yeah. When they do, like, a hard count or a soft count, it's, whatever count. A false start is so, like, um, like it's, it's, it's fickle. Sub, it's so subjective. Like. And you can't do, like, you cannot do that on the fucking game-tying field goal. Yeah. I'm sorry. I understand that I'm a Cowboys fan and I'm biased, but you do not call that on the very last play of the game yeah. when he's been doing it the entire game. And that's the worst thing, is one of the referees even said, oh, we noticed he was doing it the whole game. So why didn't you fucking say something before? Call it, like, the first time you see it. Yeah. Like, they can't, sometimes they can't move their head. Like, linemen can't move their head, like, at all. You basically have to be a fucking stat, like a gargoyle, until the play starts. Yep. Yeah, that was fucking retarded. But the fucking defense, they can jump in and fucking jump out all they want, really. Yeah. <laughs> Seems fair. <clears throat> but they ended up missing that fucking field goal pretty much because they added five yards on. But, yep. I mean, I don't know. Was it, though, because he missed it wide, didn't he? No, he hit the crossbar. Did he? Yeah. It was perfectly down the middle and then hooked and hit the crossbar, bounced right out. Oh, yeah. <sighs> yeah, that was rough. Oh, well. Cowboys got a bye week next week, and they play the Titans, and they just I mean, got Amari Cooper, so I'm not too worried about Even that would have only put him into overtime. Yeah. Uh, the Rams won again against the Niners. Yeah. <sighs> the Rams are looking spooky. Yep. The Giants lost last night. That was a fucking awful game by both sides, dude. Both of those teams look really bad. Did Beckham actually make a catch, it looks like? He got one. <clears throat> <laughs> he got at least one, I know. It says he got to 5,000 receiving yards. <clears throat> or something. That's cool. Career, probably. Fucker. Yeah, no no one cares. My phone isn't going to load the last game that I need to look at. What was the only other game? Bengals Chiefs. Uh, Bengals Chiefs yeah. We watched that one here, sort of. Yeah. We were, we were mostly playing split second in the show. Mm-hmm. I didn't even watch the Monday game either, so I really don't know how that went down. Uh, it was a game, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Not an interesting game, really. No. Both losing records. Yeah, I don't know. Kansas City just looks really good, mm-hmm. and they they. I mean, you can't keep them from scoring. No. You cannot. So what do you got this week? I didn't even look at who my picks, what picks I got right. Uh, Let's see. I'll go over them. <clears throat> so uh, we both had Denver. That was a clear one. We both had uh, the Clippers. We both, or you had Philadelphia, I had Carolina. You had the Jets. Yeah. I, I had did. Minnesota. We both had Indy. We both had New England. You had the Bucks. I had Cleveland. You had Jacksonville. I had Houston. We both had Detroit. You had the Saints. I had Baltimore. We both had the Cowboys. Uh-huh. We both had the Rams. I had the Bengals. You had the Chiefs. We both had Atlanta. So we, uh, one, two, three. Well, the Cowboys didn't win. Four. And we both got four games wrong. That's good. That's a good percentage. No, it's not too bad. <laughs> we're over fifty. We're over five hundred though. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that was a good. One. So it could have been worse. I mean, it was an okay. It was an okay week. I mean, the problem is, is that, and they were just talking about it. And I'd speak for yourself. I do agree with what they were saying. Is that I don't at all. With the NBA and the NFL, there's too much scoring going on, and it's making defensive players less valuable. And it's taken away a part of the game. But yeah. it's also getting more people watching the games, which yeah. is a good thing. And nobody's saying anything about how the Packers defense gave up zero yards this week. Yeah, no. That's never been done before. <laughs> they also uh, ran zero total yard, yards of offense. Yeah. See, I watched more college football this weekend. We had uh, Michigan played Michigan State. And Michigan's quarterback had more rushing yards than Michigan State had Total offense. <laughs> That's never been done before in, in football, college football. 
Yeah, total offense. This seems crazy. 88. Like, I've seen quarterbacks run more than like the other team's running back. Yeah, no. They had only had 88 yards of offense, and the quarterback had like 94 rushing yards. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. No. You're not supposed to. And that. it was almost a close game, too. It was 7-7 seven to seven at halftime. Michigan won 21-7. to seven. But they're Damn. looking real good. I mean, nobody's going to beat Alabama, which is just the way it goes. Yeah, I would like to watch. I, I've been watching some of it, just flipping through random games, but not like it's. There's so many teams to follow. That's the problem. It's the best part. I, you got to pick one team from each conference because each conference is crazy. Right. You know, you got like the pack, the Pac-12, which I mean, is. I all, just want to find the Syracuse game and watch it. Really, it's all like read option stuff, and then the ACC is a lot of pro style offense. Then you got the Big Twelve which is all fucking spread air raid offense. The SEC is all smash mouth football. Well, Alabama evidently hasn't had, like, their defense hasn't been great, so. No. So they're trying to, like, they started playing better this week, I think, mm-hmm. for sure. They just, they're, like, notoriously fucking good, that team is. just. It's really annoying. I mean, that's really the place you want to go, I think. If it's a running back, too. Like, as a running back, that's where you want to be. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> um. The only other, like, you want to go to an SEC school if you're playing college football. You right. want to go to Alabama, Florida, uh, LSU, and then after that, you want to go to, like, Michigan or Texas or Ohio State, USC. Then after that, it's a crapshoot. Yeah. You know, those It gets are, weird because then it just becomes reputation. Yeah. Like, school reputation. Once your reputation's built, then all of a sudden you're a football school and everybody, every year you're good no matter what because you get the best recruits. Yeah. I mean, and that works for a lot of it. I would say um, you get teams like Texas or USC and even Michigan until recently that were histor- – and Nebraska you, that were historically yeah. amazing. And now after – you like you have like two or three bad years in college football, you're done for a while. Yeah. I was watching Theo's – Theo Vaughn's podcast and he had uh, Maurice Claret on, mm-hmm. the running back. I guess he went to prison for a while and – he played for the Buckeyes. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, it was interesting to hear, like, he's a smart guy, actually, surprisingly enough. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long he was in prison for, but he's out and he does a podcast now. Uh, Ray Carruth is out of prison, too. <laughs> so is uh, OJ. Yeah. <laughs> get them together. Yeah. They should get Vic and OJ on the same team. They should start another franchise. Just like the... Just like a, and their uniform is like the stripes, the <laughs> fucking black and white. <laughs> I mean, they actually probably wouldn't be bad. If you got Vic, dude, you're fine. If you got like <laughs> Madden 0- 03 Vic. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dude, Vic was honestly like. He he was almost too good. Like, he was, like, the start of where, like, quarterbacks started to be super mobile and shit. Like, he was the first one to do that, like Cam Newton did. Uh, Randall Cunningham. Uh, McNabb was and pretty McNabb. good, too. Steve Young. Yeah. Yeah, Steve Young in a sense. But, but Cunningham was definitely the best at it. Yeah. Back in, like, I don't think Steve Young thought about it as much as Vic did. And he was more like an Aaron Rodgers. It like was he like, would I run have to go. To, yeah. um, and Roger Staubach did the same thing. Yeah, he would. Well, so much of it is feeling where the pocket collapses and knowing that running lane, like finding that running lane. That's the hardest thing. Yeah, that's the thing too. Is I was actually just talking to my dad about it. We were we. I found this Reddit post from a few years ago that was like, "What players are going to be forgotten within the next like five ten years?" Yeah. And uh, who's the quarterback for the Cardinals? Because obviously he doesn't feel the pocket collapsing. Rosen. Yeah. Josh Rosen. Yeah. Well, actually, it was (laughs) funny. We were talking about. people getting forgotten and my dad the first one he said was Carson Palmer before mm-hmm. he before he broke his knee and fucked it up I mean I think the thing is like he's a solid quarterback but like he was never like consistently with a team that like was gonna well when he was with the Bengals way back when he was up there with like Manning and, and yeah. Brady and Roethlisberger yeah but that's the thing is like when but you then, think Manning Brady Roethlisberger you think like Super well, Bowls and- Broncos and then you know like you you think of the team yeah, that yeah, he yeah. stuck with through his whole career. Yeah. I don't think he's necessarily had that. You know, I think he, of him he hasn't a, had that impact. Like you don't see his imprint on anything. No, right? I think of him as a Bengal mostly because yeah, that's where we yeah. grew up watching him. And then he was awful with the Raiders, and then he was amazing with the Cardinals. 
Mm-hmm. And then he just retired out of nowhere last year. He, yeah, it's weird that he had like a fall off with Oakland. Yeah, you know, it's like because you know he has the skill set. So that that shows you how much like schemes have to do with shit and how yeah. well your quarterback. And like fits. we said the other day too, is Bruce Arians is probably if he was still in the league, he'd be the next. He'd be the second best coach in the league, not yeah. Belichick. That's how good he was. Yeah, he was. I mean, you look at now they have Steve Wilkes. Mm-hmm. That this this is a team that has been a ten to thirteen win team for the past like four years, and all of a sudden, they they pick who who many thought was the best quarterback in the draft. Yeah, you still have David Johnson. You still have Fitzgerald. You still have a great defense, and they're fucking one in six. Yeah, I really think even with Fitzgerald, I don't know how old he is, but he's getting up there. He's like thirty five. He still fucking opens the field up for the other guys. Yeah, like really well. Like he's a guy you got to watch just because of his name. Like it's yep. it's fucking crazy. Just like how, uh, like there's 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 guys who drop off, but just because they drop off doesn't mean they still aren't super explosive at times. Like they still have the skill set. Mm-hmm. It's weird. Yeah, it's just it's, it's like an MMA where you see Rampage Jackson still out there knocking guys out, and he's been around for fucking how long? It's like yeah, he's old. He's not as good at every aspect of the sport but he still has knockout power Mm -hmm. like he still has what made him him yeah and and then i love when people are talking about guys like tom brady as if he's not a complete anomaly right like that's never going to happen again a guy that's that's better now than he ever was and he's he's appreciated as more athletic now than he ever was yeah as appreciated as he is he's underappreciated yeah because like of the shit that he's got he's done like the accomplishment that he he's like fucking how many rings does he fucking won? It's like five. You, you can't you can't even really compare that to anyone else because no one's done it. No. And and obviously everybody fucking still puts him up on a pedestal, but I mean deservedly so. Yeah, I got into a discussion on Facebook with one of my buddies from high school, talking about they had this thing and it was like uh pick pick a pick an era of football players like an all decades team yeah. and it was like. They had the the seventies, eighties, nineties, and the thousands, and like so, the seventies had like Roger Staubach and Tony Dorsett, whoever else. I, nobody picked that one. Then the eighties had like Joe Montana, Walter Payton, and Jerry Rice yeah. and Lawrence Taylor, and then the nineties was the nineties. That nobody picked that one. And then the thousands was Tom Brady, uh, Randy Moss, Adrian Peterson, and like. Demarcus Ware or somebody, and this guy was like, "Oh, if you you got to pick the thousands," and it's like, "Yeah, Revis, <laughs> yeah." But when you look at uh, statistics, I, the only player you could put ahead of Brady for goat, not even goat quarterback, but just greatest player, is probably Jerry Rice, because you can take Jerry Rice's career and you can cut it in half, and he still has more receptions, yards, and touchdowns than uh, Calvin Johnson. Right, yeah. You cut his career in half, and he has like eleven thousand yards for each year. And to take it into consideration, the fact that he ha- he didn't do it during this offensive century. No, he like, did it in the he did it when you era. could he- be tackled while the ball was in the air. And he was a small right. dude. He was like five foot ten. Yeah, like two hundred. Like there was pounds. none of this like defenseless receiver bullshit. Yeah, like, and he played for twenty one years. Twenty years. Yeah, fuck out of here, dude. Get out of here. Yeah, just to be a receiver back then was way harder, and even to be a quarterback. Yeah, and we were talking about that with, well, I we were just talking about that the other day because, um, about Troy Aikman and how he gets compared to certain people, and it's like, well, yeah, the rules were different. Like, it's not the same thing. Yeah, like if, quarterbacks are going to throw up. Like, even a mediocre quarterback now is going to be better than one of the better quarterbacks back then because yeah. they're just statistically they're going to be able to do more things. It's easier. There is a uh, my argument for Troy Aikman. I don't think he's the greatest ever. I think he's definitely top ten all time. Yeah, I would I would put him pretty close. Yeah, and uh, he didn't have the flashy stats. He didn't need them because the Cowboys th- not only were they a running but football they team, built, but yeah, they, they also were just weren't built well. Like, they weren't like a offensive powerhouse either. No, but they were built well in all aspects. Yeah. That was the thing. And uh, the thing I love, and I brought it up to a guy, and he's. He was telling me, oh, Aikman's overrated. You know, he got carried through the playoffs. It's like, no, dude. He played 16 whole games in the playoffs. Yeah. If you take every single one of those games and make it into a 16-game season. season, he threw for like 4,400 yards, like 34 touchdowns, and like five picks. Right. And that's against the best teams. And this is in the 90s when every team in the NFC was winning the Super Bowl. Well, just in the playoffs alone, that's hard. Yeah. I mean, there's a different level of pressure in the playoffs. Yeah, and then another guy's like, well, he got taken out of the game and uh, 
Jim Harbaugh won it for him or Jason Garrett won it for him when he was injured. It's like, oh, yeah, fuck him, right? Because his backup quarterback won a game. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, what a shame. Uh, as if that's never happened to Tom Brady. Yeah, or Rodgers. Oh, shit. Aaron Rodgers isn't good because Matt Flynn won a game once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn it, Matt Flynn. You ruined his legacy. <laughs> yeah. He's never <clears throat> making it to the hall now. I don't know, man. I, I It's so weird because I almost still would take Rodgers if I was building a team from the ground up. Oh, yeah. It's in this. In this day and age just the way it's played brady is like just a natural pocket passer and he throws darts like the dude doesn't miss passes really but rogers is pinpoint accurate but he also moves yeah and i think that dimension is you got to have it like i feel like that value of having a mobile quarterback is under like appreciated nowadays well, out of it's becoming more appreciated is the thing out of honestly and this is a thing too i, I was i was thinking I, I was talking to my dad out of every quarterback i've ever seen play if I could take like their prime years, right? Like if I could take just their best year ever, yeah, yeah, and put and take it Peyton Manning. Yeah, yeah, Peyton. I mean, that's the thing is Peyton was like prototypical quarterback. At the yeah, time. and the, his problem was that, but he was also, I mean, he'd get hit a lot too. And he wasn't very clutch. Yeah, that's the that's the thing, and it's it's clutch isn't very. It's like it's not like a stat you can measure, but it's definitely no. something you can look at. Well, they try to though. They yeah. they make these crazy parameters like, hey, he scored like in the fourth quarter while it's snowing with 18 seconds left <laughs> this many times. Like yeah. it's like what the fuck he has 144 you... passer rating. <laughs> like like <laughs> what what is that stat? Like there's too many parameters. Yeah, there. they were just talking about LeBron James and how he misses free throws at the end of games, like within like the last 13 seconds or whatever. He misses it's free like, throws all the time. It's like within thir- the last 13 seconds. It's like who gives a fuck? He's like, like an, he is an awful free throw shooter he's yeah. like 60 so, percent. so why does that matter that he misses free throws in the clutch <laughs> yeah i know there was a there was a thing somebody was saying on facebook about how carmelo anthony is better than kobe bryant because he, he averages more points in the fourth quarter right i've seen that same thing and i'm like okay nephew yeah <laughs> well they turn they i don't know i think those st- statisti- statisticians turn things into fucking weird yeah. like it, they, they skew them in kind of weird ways just they cherry pick the fuck out of stuff yeah yeah. Like I love the one uh, there was one about Michael Jordan and it was like when Michael Jordan is playing a team that's has a better record than him on the road, he wins seventy five percent of the time. And it's like Well you gotta admire the fact that they actually keep track of that. Yeah, but it's <laughs> at the same time it's like so you did Michael Jordan win or did the greatest dynasty of all time win those games? Yeah. What are you gonna attribute that to? It's like people. I don't. I think a lot of people, and I mean, I mean, obviously, I wasn't alive back then either. But anybody that watched basketball in the '90s will tell you that Scottie Pippen was the second best player in the league at the time. Yeah, like he was the best. He was like basically Kawhi Leonard. Dude, yeah. I mean, even like even you had Rodman with like just rebounding shit yeah. all the time. Then you had Steve Kerr, who was Steph Curry before Steph Curry. Yeah, the best three point shooter awesome ever. Guy. Luke Longley. And then you Ron had Harper. Yeah, and then you had the greatest coach of all time on top of that. Right. I mean, that's like, it's not just MJ. That's the thing. Yeah. I feel like basketball teams are just trying to build around one person now, and that's part of the problem. That's what makes it so much more boring. Yeah. You know, you're never going to see a team like the Pistons from a few years, not a few years ago, holy shit, it was like 15, 12 years ago, where they had, you know, Chauncey Billups and Ben Wallace Mm -hmm. and... uh, Whoever else is on that team. You but know? even football teams do it, though. You know, they're guilty of that building a guy. Like, you want to build around somebody, you do. But you want to build around somebody instead yeah. of just have somebody and expect him to do everything. I think that's the problem with the Packers right now is they just want Aaron Rodgers to be the guy that does everything. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. Like, hey, let, let's jo- let, let's let Jordy walk, even though, like, <laughs> he looks like one of the best receivers in the fucking league when Aaron Rodgers is throwing to him because they have, like, a connection. And they know, like, oh, this is a fire drill. Like, I need to get open this way. And Rodgers, when he directs traffic and shit and he's on the run, that's when he's at his best. Yeah. Is when guys are just fucking in their fire drill mode just trying to get open. You know what's funny, too, is another quarterback that I would take? Russell Wilson. Yeah. For sure. Because the same evasiveness. It's the same thing. I don't think his accuracy is is good. No. I think he takes more chances, too. I think he's definitely... I would take him over, like, Big Ben. Yeah. Uh but you also want the Hail Mary. Yeah. <laughs> the Fail Mary. <laughs> yeah, he just, yeah, he's just, he's a, know. well, and I think he's, he's, I mean, he's, um, he's faster. 
I mean, he can get to the edge faster than Rodgers. I think Russell Wilson is like a better version of like Dak Prescott, where they, neither of them really make many mistakes, but Russell Wilson is just better. Yeah, I think that they're both in like a spot where they're like good in all aspects of the quarterback position, yeah. these, like not as it is right now. And that's the thing is that I still up in the air on Dak, but I really think that he's just got to be more confident. Yeah, the way he was his rookie season when he was stealing time away from Romo and he was the man and he was he had he didn't have a lot of pressure on him because he was a rookie. Well, they're putting a lot on on Zeke, you know. That too, but I Zeke think can handle it. Zeke loves it. Yeah, he does, but I don't know that that's. <laughs> It's going to work. Sustainable? Yeah. No. There's only long one run. running back that I've seen in the past 10 years that you can build a team around, and that's Adrian Peterson. Yeah. I mean, unless you count LaDainian Tomlinson in that, too. But even then, that didn't... Yeah, but even he fell off of that a little bit. I mean, because considering... I mean, I don't know how old Tomlinson was like towards the end of his career, but Peterson's at the end of his career right now, and he's still a fucking savage. But Tomlinson wasn't like that at the end no, of his career dude, when, when he was what, playing for the Jets. Yeah, I was going to say, he fucking nosebombed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went to see them. Uh, I went to see their training camp in like 2011 or something like that. Yeah. And that was when they were pretty good. That was when... Um, they had Sanchez. They went Mark to Sanchez and uh, Tim Tebow was their backup quarterback. Yeah, and they had... Um, the Sons of Anarchy. They San Antonio had, Holmes and... They had Muhammad Wilkerson and Damon Harrison and Sheldon yeah. Richardson. Yeah, like that was when they were like a playoff team. And then right? they had Revis. Yeah, who, yeah. Who was the other guy they had? Antonio Cromartie. Yep. Uh, oh my, what the fuck happened to him? I have no idea. He went to the... Cardinals. Cardinals, yeah. And then he, he must have just retired. I think, I think so. That's another position that doesn't last. Is he corners. was a guy that, like, if he was the number one corner you on a team, you, you would fucking know who he was. Like, I mean, you still know who he is, but Revis overshadowed him because oh, yeah. they were on that same de defense. Well, it was just like, why not? He also had fucking, Cromartie also had fucking 16 kids. He's yeah. got a show now, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. It's on the USA or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, there's another one, Brandon Browner. When he was on the, uh, not the Eagles, holy shit, when he was on the Seahawks, he was overshadowed by Sherman. But yeah. then he went to the Patriots and people realized, like, now yeah. Now he's a number one guy. He, like, he was he basically 1A, 1B with Revis, but Belichick just knew how to use Browner as basically, like, a fucking strong safety that covers receivers. Mm -hmm. That just bodies the shit out of guys. Because, dude, he was huge. He was, like, he's 6'6", 240 yeah. for a corner. Yeah, that's. I've always wondered why they don't. Why can't you just have a fucking corner that's the size of Jimmy Graham? <laughs> you know. Dude, yeah, that's. <laughs> then the thing. if like, you have that, then no one's completing a pass. Somebody was telling me about. Oh, Garofalo's Rock was telling me about how crazy it'd be if LeBron James played football. If he played a tight end, I'm like, dude, yeah. put LeBron James in at like free safety or corner. Right. Like he's gonna yeah. destroy right. people because he's faster than everybody, and he's gonna be stronger than everybody. Yeah. You just need Jason Witten as a as a safety. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking a. That's probably. I'm gonna do that in Madden when I get home. I'm yeah. gonna make like a six foot eight, two hundred fifty pound cornerback. I'm just gonna pull all my offensive guys and put them on defense and put all my defense. You know what I did the other offense. day for fun? I made a fullback. Ninety nine strength, so ninety nine trucking. Nothing. So you just blocked once in a while. <laughs> 99 impact blocking. He's just pancaking everybody. <laughs> My franchise mode team is like all above 80, but the one spot I'm like weak is fullback. They're like, he's like a 58 yeah. <laughs> or some shit. Cause it's, you're never going to use him. I love, uh, I, I do a fantasy draft and I always pick my first three picks are always corners. I just corner the corner market. Yeah. You take, I take like five. You just got to corner the corner. Yeah. I just take like, you know, Patrick Peterson, Jalen Ramsey, and like Marshawn Lattimore, and then sim the rest of it. Because yeah. no one's throwing on you then. Exactly. That's the hardest part about Madden is getting a fucking defense. Yeah. Getting a defensive defensive backs, because it's way easier to get coverage sacks than it is to get coverage. Right, yeah, that's true. To get pass rush uh, picks. But yeah. So let's get to the picks for this week, speaking of picks. Picks. Uh, Miami, Houston. Houston. Based Miami's logo. Yep. You got you look at that Dolphins logo. See, it's the initials for Miami are MIA, missing in action. Yeah. Tannehill's fucking gone, too. See, I got Miami for sure. 
Or wait, no, Houston. <laughs> uh, final answer, Houston. These Texans. are all the reasons I that Miami is going to lose. I have Miami. <laughs> all right, uh, Philly, Jacksonville. I almost want like, I feel like this will be solid, like a fucking good game here. But I'm going to go with Jacksonville. Philly didn't look that great this week. I feel like they're in a spot where, but they're also in a spot where they really need to fucking get back. And like, they were talking about how, like the head coach, how they were fucking, he didn't like the performance and shit. And he was like, oh, I think we're okay or whatever. It's like, no, you're not, you're not okay. Like this team isn't okay. They're in a f- spot where they need to fucking start winning games. Don't like, I get like the Super Bowl hangover kind of thing, but it's not at this point. It's not an excuse. It's week no. fucking eight, right? Like it's like <laughs> at yeah, a certain they point, don't even look the same. I'm gonna at, go, at a certain point turn it the fuck around and look like your Super Bowl team again. I'm gonna go Jacksonville too. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I think they're in a rough spot, and I I think Philly does need to win here like pretty badly. Yeah. It's not like they're in a horrible spot, but they're in a spot where they fucking need to turn things around a little. And I don't know. I think this is a disappointing season for them. But it's rough coming off the Super Bowl. It's always hard to do that. You Like, especially coming off a Super Bowl, you always lose guys like fucking yeah. crazy. And they lost a ton of their coaching staff. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different team, really. It's hard and to you judge got guys that. like Ronald Darby, who was like a lockdown corner last year, looking like paper mache this year. Did you see there were like two plays against the Panthers where he wasn't even looking at his... He was like... He was, like, not even paying attention to the play. Like, he just does not give a shit. Yeah, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah, no, not at all. (laughs) I don't think. No. (laughs) Uh, Ravens-Panthers is another toss-up game, kind of. That's a game, like, 23. I believe in Carolina, man. I fucking love Cam Newton, dude. I got Carolina. Really. Final answer. Put me down for the Ravens. I'll take the Ravens. Yeah. Put me I like the Ravens right now. The Ravens defense is just too good. But I really, like I said, I really do like the Panthers. Um, yeah, put me down for uh, the Panthers. Final answer. Carolina. Yeah. I'm going to use a lifeline on that one. Yeah. Phone a friend. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you can. We should do that on this show. Phone a friend. <laughs> Ask for help. For sure. Jets, Bears? Bears. Easily. Yeah, That's yeah, not even close. Bears. There's just something about... Uh, I don't know. No. Yeah, the Bears yeah. defense is going to shut them down. That's not even going to be fucking fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, their offense is not going to handle that, I don't think. Uh, Tampa Bay, Cincinnati. You know what? I almost want to take the Bucks. Yeah, I want to take the Buccaneers too, dude. <laughs> I really want to take the Buccaneers. But, um, like, you wonder how much of it was who they were playing last week. You know? Cincinnati. Like, you, you know, like, I, I don't know that Cincinnati's really as bad as they looked. But do you think the Buccaneers would have put up more than 10 against the Chiefs? I think they would have. Mm. No? You don't <laughs> think don't, they would have? I don't have? know if they would have. <laughs> <laughs> Not I got, the way they I, were I'm playing, gonna take, dude. I'm going to take Tampa Bay with this one, man. There's just, um, I got a good feeling about them. Right, I think, take, I think maybe Cincinnati, Cincinnati is going to fucking implode now because they've lost two of their last three. Yeah. AJ Green, Andy, Andy Dalton's not looking. He's looking like Andy Dalton now. I'm going to take. I'm going to see. I'm going to take Cincinnati. Plus, they don't have perfect for for this game. I'm pretty sure. That could be a good thing. Yeah. Just think about all his penalty yards, dude. <laughs> That's all he's good for, man. <laughs> Going backwards. Yeah. Seattle, Detroit. Uh, I, uh, I got Seattle. Detroit. I say uh, Seattle. <laughs> I like Detroit, too. Uh, I just don't think... I don't think Seattle is going to be able to do anything about Matt Stafford. Yeah. That's going to be a good game, too. Um, I'll definitely have to watch that one. I'll be able to actually watch games this week, I think. <laughs> That'd be nice. 
uh, Denver, Kansas City. Is yeah, put me Kansas down City. for the Chiefs, without a doubt. Didn't they already play this year? Probably. I would imagine. They probably play a couple times. They play twice. Yeah. This Natty Daddy is, like, warm. It's it's tastes like tin. <laughs> tastes like aluminum foil. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucking disgusting. Uh, Okay. Giants, Redskins. Washington. In New York. Washington. So the Giants are bad, man. They're, they're they so are bad. bad. It's weird because every time I say they're bad, they have a good week, though. It's so fucking they're weird. They're so bad. It's like they have a good week all of a sudden, and then they're like, yeah, yeah, we're we're still bad. Yeah, I think Washington looks pretty decent, but they lost last week. No, they didn't. I thought they did. They beat Dallas. Oh, yeah, that's right. They played Dallas. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good team, honestly. They're probably the best team in the division. Mm. I think they're better than Philadelphia. I don't know. Dallas is like... I almost feel like... Dallas is one of the better teams in the division. They're just I feel not like playing their fucking to their potential. If Dallas can fuck off, and if Amari Cooper ends up being as good as advertised, because I really do like the trade. Mm-hmm. They were gonna they get remind res- me of the fucking Yankees. Like <laughs> the Cowboys were gonna. Like a, <laughs> they have a good team, but they just don't play the way they yeah, should. Yeah, they were gonna get a receiver with the first round pick in the draft anyway. So you might as well get a receiver that you know what you're getting, and he's definitely better than anybody coming into the draft this year. Right. And people are knocking about how he's old. He's the same age as Calvin Ridley, who was just picked 15th overall. So I, I think if you play, I think if Dallas and Washington play five times. I think Dallas wins probably three out of those games. Three yeah. of those games. I really do. It really just comes down to the fact that they're so fucking inconsistent. Yeah. But they really, that's exactly what it is. They're just not consistent at all. And it's a shame because I feel like that team's fucking good. Yeah. I, I can't put my finger on what it is either. It's it's not, it's Dak's fault, but it's not all his fault. I think they need, I don't think I they mean, have like a vision. Like they don't have like a, uh, I don't know, I feel like they're, Locker room isn't that cohesive either, no. it seems like. They're missing their, the best center in the league, Frederick. He's out for the year. You yeah. Know? Uh, the defense is number two in the league in scoring and number three in the league in yards allowed. And for some reason, the offense just cannot put up points. If the mm. offense was even just putting up like 25 the a game. The offensive line hasn't been as good as they should be either. No, because Travis Frederick's been out, the center. <laughs> Is that really the main Yeah, reason, he's though? the best center in the league. He's probably the best player on that line. I mean, he's... I mean, are they and, getting pressure up the middle, though? Is that where it's coming from? It's basically coming from the fact that... Because I feel like they're breaking down more than they should. You like, can, I feel like that offensive line is good, but I can see them. When I watch them play, I notice they break down faster than they would normally. Yeah, I mean, and also Leal Collins isn't that great either, the, the right tackle. And right, then yeah. the left guard is a rookie. I think some of them are getting beaten. It's It's... Too, you're you're not. really you're really relying on basically the right guard and the left tackle to shoulder the entire offensive line, and they can't do it. Right, I mean, it's Zach, pass protection is the problem. Yeah, yeah. Not and, necessarily running. I think they can run the ball okay. It's just yeah, and that's the thing too is Connor Williams, the left guard. He's good. He's probably one of the better uh, offensive linemen rookies this year. But that was his problem in college was uh, pass protection. Yeah. He was a great run-blocking guard, but he wasn't great at pass protection. And it takes a while for offensive linemen to get a hang of it. The fact that he's as good as he is now is nice. And the backup center, Joe Looney, is decent. He's super athletic. This is That's the one I showed. I think we watched the clip of him running with Zeke down the field, keeping up with him the whole way down yeah. the field. And he's great at run blocking, too, but it's really the pass blocking is awful. That's what it is, yeah. It's just pass protection. And then, you know, if you if you looked at Dak Prescott and Madden, his sense pressure would be oblivious. That's exactly what it is, <laughs> Like, it'd too. be like, paranoid. He, even if his... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's big, a big problem. I think if he could understand where the pocket's moving, he'd be able to move with his feet a lot more. That's yeah. That's for sure. And that's the thing, is the way he was playing against Jacksonville, and then the way he was playing against Washington, it was like... You know what it probably is, too? He doesn't like playing on the road. He can't do it because they've won every game at home so far. By yeah, they're they're usually pretty good at home. That's the thing. Yeah. But that's, their stadium's overpowered. That's why. But yeah. <laughs> please nerf. Please, please nerf please, Dallas. Please nerf the stadium. windows. 
So yeah, I'm taking the Redskins for that game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> overall, <laughs> I guess we'll go with the Redskins because yeah. the Dallas <laughs> Dallas is on a bye week. <laughs> I'm taking the bye week to beat Dallas this week. Uh, Cleveland Pittsburgh, Cleveland baby. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's rough. These like, <sighs> yeah, yeah. I want to say Cleveland too, but it's weird because you know you look at the Pittsburgh logo. And it looks like and you're a, like yeah, that stands for. It looks like an art palette. Fuck them, <laughs> yeah. bunch of Bob Ross fucking looker like yours. Dude, it's always bothered me that uh, their logo's only on the right side of their helmet. You don't like that? I think it's cool. I was like, what the fuck? Like, what they can't afford another set of stickers? I think like, it looks cool that it's only on the half the helmet. <laughs> I think I want to see a team that doesn't have the logo on the helmet. You mean the Browns or the Bengals? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I mean, the Rams don't have like a decal; they just have that fucking the swirl, swirl. Yeah, yeah. The Rams do have the best helmets, dude. They have the best jerseys. If they go back to wearing the the neon yellow and neon blue or whatever, yeah, yeah, the yellow, the sick. the greatest show on those ones, and then the Bears. They had the white and blue helmet, though. Yeah, that's weird. Which is kind of fucking. But the uh, the Bears jerseys, the Monsters of the Midway ones that don't have a logo, it's the super dark blue yeah. with the super bright orange, yeah. no logo. Those are the best jerseys. And you got the Chargers powder blue. Yeah. I think the Packers should just always wear their dark blue and brown. <laughs> <laughs> the dot, the dot yeah, number. The big yellow dot. The color palette makes no sense. <laughs> it's yellow, bl- navy blue, and brown. <laughs> What about the Broncos ones that are, like, brown and tan? Remember those? No. Brandon Marshall got in trouble because he he twisted his socks so it looked like a spiral going up his leg, and he got fined for it. Brown and tan. Holy shit, I don't remember that at all. (laughs) They only wore them once. Remember the Eagles ones that were, like, neon, and they were, like, the baby baby blue and neon yellow? Do you remember those ones? Because those jerseys are fucking hilarious, too. The Eagles were wearing baby blue? They were wearing, yeah, they were wearing, like, baby blue and yellow. (laughs) What? (laughs) I don't know, like, like, I get it with the Packers, like, I get it's a throwback. Like, that makes sense, and they wear the brown helmet because it's, it's, like, the, the leather helmets they used to wear. That's what it's supposed to be a tribute to. But, I mean, I don't get baby blue and fucking, and yellow. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you don't remember them? I gotta, there it is. It doesn't exist. You're making this up. Well, these ones. <laughs> oh, my God. That's awful. <laughs> that is so bad. You don't remember those? They wore them once, and I they lost by, like, 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they look like they look like fucking peewee football. Jer- they're actually decent jerseys. It's kind of it's like... A, it's, they're a, it's a good uniform, but not for the Eagles. Yeah, that looks like a fucking shit college team, like, wears those. Like Fresno State. Yeah. Or, like, San Jose State. Yeah. Or like Syracuse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. So uh, I'm taking the Browns. Yeah, because Pittsburgh's uniforms. Yeah. Uh, Indianapolis and Oakland. I'm taking Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. Give me the fucking Colts with that one. Buddy. Yeah. I mean, if Derek Carr's going to be crying as much as he has been. But these Bears ones are my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Those, the, are, those are bad. The ass. sharp orange. They don't have a anything on their helmet that's no. just a empty fucking blue helmet I think they wear those like once a year they still wear them once a year I think yeah in division games and uh, then the fucking I can't find the greatest sh- oh these ones the greatest show on turf jerseys these ones yeah those are bad. those are probably my favorite I like the, I'd kind of like the white and blue too it's weird. They either do white and blue, yellow and blue, or gold and blue. The it's white like, and why blue. Why do they make a fucking yeah? Decision? The white and blue ones are nice because those. That's what they wore with in the seventies with uh, Deacon Jones. Yeah, I think they should do baby blue and yellow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And then I also I love the Cowboys fucking Thanksgiving jerseys. You know those uh, ones? Are those the blue ones? The blue ones with the. Uh, the white shoulders yeah yeah and then the pants are white with the blue stripes and they play at home on thanksgiving Mm -hmm. usually don't they usually wear white at home they wear white almost every game but yeah they they wear white at home and the redskins wear white at home huh 
So the visiting team has to wear their home uniform. Mm-hmm. Cause way back in the day, uh, all these teams were redesigning their jerseys. So every team back in like the sixties and seventies wanted to wear their cool color jerseys. And the Cowboys owner at the time was like, you know what? He goes, we already have our franchise and our look established. He goes, we're going to wear every, if every team wants to wear these new jerseys they're putting out, we're going to keep wearing our white. So that yeah. way, if people see us one week, they see us the next week, they know exactly what to look for. The white jerseys with those bluish, the blue silver pants. Yeah. I fucking love those too. A lot of people hate them. The blue, the, like the weird t- turquoise pants. Yeah. I don't know. They don't I do that anymore. The, they, I always thought the blue just looked better. The blue jersey. Yeah. They're cursed. That's why nobody likes them. I fucking hate it when they wear the blue, dude. Seriously. They just don't win. No. I don't own, I don't even own a blue Cowboys jersey. All my Cowboys jerseys are white. I'm serious. Just like how you, if you're a Yankee fan, you don't own an away jersey. That's fucking moronic. You gotta own pinstripes. Yeah. Well, the Yankees just wear it without pinstripes. They don't wear gray. That's gray. Is it? Yeah. Their away jerseys are all gray. They're fucking gross. Hmm. Baseball's a little different. I mean, baseball, obviously, there's no there's no turnovers. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, it's different. You don't have to have, like, drastically different colors. Uh, okay, San Fran and Arizona. Give me the 49ers. Fuck Arizona, dude. They're mm. bad. Yeah, they are. Green Bay and L.A. I want to say Green Bay, but... Yeah, me too, but I don't think so. Yeah, I think I really do have the Rams. I'm going to pick the Rams, too. I think, because they're still undefeated, right? I think if any team is going to knock them out, it's going to be Aaron Rodgers going crazy. And he's had a week to recover. they got to play at Kansas City in a couple of weeks, too, I think. The, the Rams? Rams do. That'll be a fucking great game. Yeah. And then Green Bay has to play New, or, uh, New England and Kansas City. I think. Really? Yeah. I think their schedule is fucking horrible after this. Bye week. Maybe it's not Kansas City. It's oh, another it team Orleans. that's really fucking good. Wait, maybe not. No, it's uh, it's the Dolphins. That's who it is. Oh. <clears throat> that sucks. They looked scarier, though. Yeah. The Dolphins looked scarier a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, Minnesota and New Orleans. Give me the Saints. Yeah, I'm going to ride with Drew Brees. Pretty much. I mean, that's probably a close game, too. I, that one, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the Vikings take that. Because mm-hmm. they're a pretty solid team right now. It's going to come down to wh- whose defense shows up more. Yeah. Because, obviously, Drew Brees is going to be Drew Brees. Minnesota is always a weird team. They're kind of like a mediocrity team. It's like they kind of fluctuate a little bit around 500. <laughs> It's kind of weird, too, because you see like them play super good defense sometimes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes their offense just goes off. But they're not like a consistently good team. You know, it seems like Green Bay is like usually the division winner. And I feel like that division's strong. Yeah. What really comes down to is a lot of the teams in your division implode by the end of the year. At the, yeah, at the end. Or they're fighting their way into a wild card. Like, what was it a few years ago? The, the Lions were like 7-2. and two. And Rodgers was out for the last six weeks of the season, and they ended up finishing like nine and seven and missed the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to be consistently good in the NFL. Like, people thought the I mean, Vikings... hell, when Green Bay won the fucking Super Bowl, they were a wild card team. They were eight and six or yeah. something like that. Ten and six. They were eight. Well, they were eight and six, and then they had to run the last, like, couple weeks. They had to win out, basically. Yeah. In order to make the wild card. Oh, they card. were eight and... S- yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they made the wild card and fucking made a run. Um, But it's like, that's that's the thing. I th- That division's always fighting at the end of the season, it seems like. You know, no one's really a runaway in that division, it seems like. Like, it's not like... It's not like uh, the, the Packers are up three wins on the Bears at the end of the year, usually. It's just a fucking uh, close division. New England and Buffalo is definitely New England. <laughs> Dude, watch fucking Derek Anderson throw a perfect game. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I would actually like to see that. And then we go see Buffalo and beat Chicago. 
I know we're going to see that. Uh, it's going to be a good game, even though I'm not taking that lady anymore. Yeah, but she didn't. She didn't really want to go anyway. Yeah. She only wanted to see my dad. <laughs> she just said she wanted to go. What? She just said she wanted to go, and then you were like, oh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. She, um, no, she thought it was in December. Oh. So she thought it was December 4th instead of November 4th, and then she texts me today. She goes, oh, I can't go. I got to go to a concert November 3rd. I'm like, uh. So? <laughs> Those aren't the same days. I, don't think. I told her not to worry about it. it. I'm going to see if she wants to go out to dinner or lunch or something this week. It's on the 4th, right? Yep. November 4th. Yeah. So what do we got to think of bus? Yep, we got to meet at Herb Phillipson's at 5 in the morning. The bus is leaving from that Jesus parking Christ. lot. And bring your own booze, because I don't know if they're gonna have booze supplied for us. Five in the morning. So I'm bringing like I'm bringing like a bottle of Hennessy. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I don't think that they're gonna supply you with booze. On an Oswego Health bus. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring Hennessy and a couple shooters. My dad's gonna bring beer. Vinny's gonna bring bo- shooters because he always is. Right. You can just bring that whole bottle of black. I'll velvet. bring a thirty rack. Yeah. <laughs> I'm drinking on the way up, too. Fuck that shit, dude. At 5.30 in the morning? Fuck yeah. I don't think I can do that. I'll probably fall asleep. The game's not until 1, right? It's a 1 o'clock game. Yeah. And we're, they're paying for a tailgating party, too. They're mm-hmm. having a, they're having a buffet catered. Yeah, but who do you... We don't have a tailgate if we're riding a bus. <laughs> no, it's going to be like a private event. Oh. So they just bring a... Bring a truck up, and then there's actually a tailgate. Yeah, it's Fat Cat Foods. <laughs> Whatever. I mean. Oh, yeah. So the Packers, the schedule, dude, you guys got the Rams yeah, in Los Patriots. Angeles, and then you have in New England the week after. Yeah. Then you have home against Miami, and then you have at Seattle, at Minnesota, and then you have Arizona, yeah, Atlanta. I think Seattle's beatable. And then you have at Chicago, and your final game is against Detroit. Yeah, it's a lot of division games, which I think are winnable games. Yeah. They always are. I think they just need to put it together. I don't know what the fuck the issue is. Offensively, they stall a little bit. They score a lot in one half, and then they do nothing in the second. Or that's the opposite, and they do nothing in the first, and they score in the second. They need to just score through all four quarters, even if they're putting up field goals. You know? Yeah. I think that's their big issue. And, I mean, their defense does always struggle. You know, it's going to take a while before that defense becomes a fucking thing. And I don't know that the Packers' defense is ever going to be a thing. You know, it, it, they're, they're they're perennially bad on defense. They just have been. That's their identity. You know, how, how long have the Packers been a shit defense? It's like as long as I can remember, really. You know, they're kind of just a, a defense that allows points and then their offense goes off. That's just how they've been for, for years. They were really good with Nick Collins. Yeah, I mean, it was an okay defense with, like... Uh, Julius Peppers and Clay and... Charles Woodson. I mean, that was Super Bowl year. That really. was prime Woodson. Yeah. No, that was actually well, that prime. Well, that was, that was his last year. I think he retired after the Super Bowl. No, he played in Oakland after the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, that's right. He and played, he had like, like, a year or two. He And he had, like, fucking... He went... He made an all-pro at, like, 37. Well, he was with the Raiders when he started. He got drafted by the Raiders. Yeah, he? but he made a he made an all-pro team at 37 as a free safety. No, he's... Uh, he's, one, mm. he's one of my favorite players of all time. Dude. Yeah. Like, he won the Heisman as a corner. How yeah. do you do yeah, that? Yeah, exactly. Like, that's fucked up, dude. I could go on about Charles Woodson for a while. He really is. He, like, got me into Michigan football when I was younger. Mm-hmm. He's just so fucking good. Yeah, he, in the Super Bowl, he injured his collarbone, and he was out for most of the game. Yeah. It was, like, in the second quarter, he went down. And that was, they had Charlie Pepra and, like, some, a bunch of random fucking dudes. But they were all stepping up. That was the thing. It's like they were playing hard. And Nick Collins was a fucking... Solid fucking player, dude. He broke his neck, right? Yeah, I don't even know what ever happened to him. But a lot of that defense just disappeared. But I like that we have... I think HaHa Clinton Dix is coming up pretty pretty well. I think that dude's developing. 
he's going to be a decent corner. But their uh, secondary is always, a, you know, that's what's questionable. And I think that's what Brady's going to you know what go off the Packers against. got to do is they got to get fucking Patrick Peterson from Arizona. He wants out of Arizona. They won't. They won't. New England's going to get him. Book it. I seriously. See, it's like you look at what New England does and they pull these guys and you just you, you look at Green Bay and you're like, "Why why don't they do that? Like why don't they get guys that they could afford?" Yeah. But they just don't make those moves, and I, and I don't know what it is, what that philosophy is all about. You know, they want to just draft and develop. I think that's part of the problem. But I, I, I it's a, you know, when Brady's playing that defense, he's just going to tear him apart. I think, I think they're going to struggle with New England bad. I agree, but it's, yeah. the, you got to put up forty five points to beat New England at this point. You know, I think that's what they're going to have to do. It's going to be a shootout, if anything. Because New England's defense isn't that great either, really. So yeah, those are uh, those are the picks, I guess. Very concise again. I think we were all pretty. We agree pretty much on these ones this week. Yeah, um, I think the only one we split was Seattle, Detroit, and, and then Tampa, Tampa Bay, Bay, Cincinnati. And that's yeah. really just because my heart really likes Tampa Bay, dude. I love Jameis Winston. Anybody that anybody that sexually assaults girls and loves crab legs is like my hero. Right. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then um I just and Matt Stafford is, you know, he's I think he's a great quarterback. I think he's top 10 in the league. Yeah, he and is. Um, I would say mm, yeah, I would say top 10. Who who is your top 10? You 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 obviously no order. You obviously have Breeze, Brady, Rogers, yeah. Wilson. You're gonna have Flacco. Flack. <laughs> You're gonna have Goff, Mahomes, uh, Stafford. Yep. <sighs> uh, uh, you're definitely gonna have. Um, I don't know. Philip Rivers. You said Wilson, right? Yep. You're definitely gonna have Big Ben. Yeah. Uh, let's put him right outside the top 10. You're definitely going to have. Yeah. I'd did put, I say Goff already? And Mahomes. Wait, let's start over. We got Brady's. <laughs> thing is, like, I don't know if I'd put Big Ben. We got Brady, Rogers, Brady's, of... Stafford, Wilson, Mahomes, Goff, Matt Ryan. Yeah, definitely Matt Ryan. Then you're going to have. Uh, after uh, that, you're going to have. Derek uh, Carr. <laughs> he cries a lot. You're gonna have uh, I don't know Stafford. Ninth, yeah, definitely Stafford. Stafford ninth, and then you're gonna have Alex Smith. I think Alex Smith rounds out the top ten. I think maybe Carson Wentz. Uh, I don't know Flacco. Carson's been questionable. Would you take though. Flacco over Alex Smith? I probably would. I would take Joe Flacco over Alex Smith. Yeah. So put Joe Flacco tenth. We're missing a quarterback, and people are gonna get pissed. Ben Roethlisberger? Nope. Not going to take Dalton. Um, not definitely not. Dak Prescott? Nope. Deshaun Watson? Trubisky? Do you think Deshaun Watson's top ten? Kirk Cousins? Do you think he's top ten? Then I mean tenth. This is number no, ten. No, the thing is, well, what's weird is Kirk Cousins. Like when he plays well, he plays really well. But usually he's like average. But it's not, yeah, like he's like a pedestrian quarterback. Would you take Deshaun like. Watson tenth? Andrew Luck ten? Do you think he's top ten? See, the top nine is basically yeah, yeah. Solid. Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck's 10. the tenth. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Probably, probably better than Goff. And I would say definitively he's top top ten. I yeah. mean, he he played really well this week too. Yeah, it's just I don't know. He he, you look at him statistically, and he does play really well. But I don't know. I think the team isn't really, it's not there. The team isn't there, so because of that, his name isn't out there as much. And Everybody's no, looking at Mahomes right now. And he's been gone for two years, so there's no hype around him anymore. Well, that's the whole thing. The whole story is Mahomes right now. That's the whole league. The whole fucking story in the league. So, I, I don't know. To come down to earth too, bud. Yeah. Yeah, Mahomes is going to, he's going to fall off at some point. But I don't know if he's going to fall off drastically. I think he's going to fall off like to the point where like they can still carry themselves with momentum in the playoffs. 
I think that's a playoff team for sure. That, and and a deep playoff team. Yeah, that's an AFC championship team. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Um since it's gonna be week eight, who's your uh mid season Super Bowl pick? Um I got the Rams. I really like the Rams, but it's just really weird when you see a team who's undefeated at this point and because i mean they're definitely they're almost clinching a playoff berth right now <laughs> yeah i think actually <laughs> like if, they're knocking on the door of a playoff i'm berth. pretty sure they can actually clinch their did i just lose another button yeah probably it's gone <sighs> that's two buttons i've lost today. you gotta stop losing your buttons out of this jacket just put them back in there. I lost one this morning, and I lost one on the way here. But yeah, I think the Rams. It's it's like I said. I think it's weird when they're that, like when they're this good at this point. Yeah. And then you like you expect them to kind of like lose their momentum. I don't know. It's it's a weird situation. But I think they'll definitely go deep into the playoffs. I don't know that they're a Super Bowl team though. I don't. I really don't. No. If they're playing the way they are, they're a Super Bowl team. But I think at some point they lose that momentum and. I don't know. Who knows? I would like to see him in the Super Bowl. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. That'd be a cool change of pace. As long as New England isn't in there again, you know? New England's winning it all. Rams, Chiefs. Rams, Chiefs. I got uh, <laughs> I got Rams, New England, dude. I really do. Really? I really do. I got the Rams and the Pats. I think New England loses in the, in the playoffs. I don't think they do. I, if they lose in the playoffs, they're losing in the Super Bowl. No, I think they lose in the AFC Championship game. Against Kansas City? Yeah. I think Mahomes uh, tackles Tom Brady on the sideline. You want to put, you want to put a... And he puts them both out of the game for, you want, for fighting. You want to put a six-pack of Natty Daddies on that? <laughs> no, we'll put a bootlegger on it. Oh, fuck yeah. All right, bud. I'm heading, dude. I'll see you around. All right. Okay, bye, everybody. Clear Shots is available on any of your favorite podcast platforms. ClearShotsPodcast.com is the best place to find all of our social media links. You can find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at ClearShotsPod. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next time.